Don in London, hello. June 26th, my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour, equally addictive around people, places and things. Trying to be with the right people, with the right, in the right place, with the right things, doing the right things, and often a drink in hand. So these days, sober today, just one day at a time, that's what I prefer, to be sober. So I can find out how I'm feeling, what's going on, find a balance in living life and finding out who I am, more about who I am by the end of the day. So expectations have changed. I don't reward myself with alcohol. I don't drink because I'm sad. I don't drink because, because I just don't. And why? because if I went back to drinking I guess I'd end up back where I was before because once an alcoholic always an alcoholic and thank goodness that is so because I know what will hurt me most is not knowing who I am making life difficult by drinking and then losing sight of where I am emotionally and spiritually so if I know what my feelings are and they fit the experience I'm having my emotions fit what's going on and if I'm connected to this one moment where life is happening that's emotional and spiritual covered as it were it doesn't mean the quality is good or bad it just means I'm in the moment and what enriches the moment is knowing what is going on so I can make free choices or freedom of choice today about life and what can happen and what cannot happen as well so how did I learn how to do this well a good alcoholic keeps on going to the bitter end and sometimes it kills us sooner rather than later and we try and use our willpower to beat something that cannot be beaten with self-will self-will runs riot and we keep on drinking no matter what it's almost as if we're on a collision course with death and we are one way or another but uh, alcohol or any other substance or certain behaviours will speed up the process and I guess that's a waste that's just the way it is but we don't know it when we're in the malady we think we can work it out we know better we can do it on our own and my moment of clarity was simply I cannot do it on my own and uh, the way my videos work at the moment is uh, today's reflections then past years and then the step six reading because it's June all about recovery and step six is about what do we do about our defects of character or areas which impede our understanding of now so mine are getting fearful putting on a brave face and being somewhat egotistical thinking I can sort it out on my own and some things I can sort out on my own but other things I can't and I need to know the difference and that's what I learn every day in recovery and what helped me most find out how to do this was a fellowship and that fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous I never speak for it, cannot, will not it's full of unique authentic people who speak for themselves where they will and although we have trusted servants who run, run the organisation as such they don't actually change the way people are nor do they govern they are trusted servants simply making sure fellowship works as best it can at grassroots level where all decisions are made by groups of people working together great news so what will follow on from this daily reflections from AA literature and fellowship uh, with a little bit of me in there and uh, the step six so what's on my mind today and you know as we get older sometimes memories come back from the past and they're, they're there for a reason they just happen and occur so these are some of the things which occurred to me this morning on many occasions I saw the impact of that alcohol on my father and he was an alcoholic although none of us really understood alcoholism we just understood that he drank a lot and it made him very difficult the impact of alcohol on my father explosive anger and rage and verbally abusive on a rampage until he was exhausted and slipped into a dreamless sleep I only imagine it was a dreamless sleep because that's how I used to end up in oblivion 
because oblivion was far better than the dreams I used to have when not drinking. Fearful of what might happen next. This is me. Fearful of what might happen next. Home was never a sanctuary. And as a youngster, when Dad came home, and he'd had a few, and that was pretty much every time, he was never really that happy. It was as if all the anger came out when he was under the influence of drink. And he had reason to be unhappy. He had a bad childhood. He, he suffered many indignities because of his situation. And his step-parents, who were impacted by the First World War, and then he served in the Second World War in the RAF, and it did him no favours, and he was stiff up a lip and get on with it. But when he drank, the rage of life, rage at his situation came out. And I guess I learned to suppress anger, rage and vengefulness in me because I didn't like what I saw. And I looked to please people rather than anger them. And that meant I didn't really understand that I did have real choices in life, real choices to be me. And following on, these are some of the things which really impact on me on a daily basis. How am I feeling? Why? And what can I do today? So when I ask myself, how am I feeling? Why? What can I do? I'm relating to how I feel today, hopefully having dealt with the wreckage of the past. And that was part of an assertiveness program I attended many years ago. And it was uh, a life changer for quite a number of reasons. Just before it, I had suffered a loss. My father had died back in, the, back in 1991. And the relationship ended as well. So real death of a parent and loss of uh, a partner. And she was still alive. And I found that really hard to deal with. So two elements of grief working together, but for different reasons. And that took me down a peg or two, I tell you. It opened up the door to my true feelings and it hurt a great deal. And I never felt pain quite like it, which I tried to medicate away with alcohol. I had denied my feelings for a long time and it was overwhelming. And I can remember saying to my partner bef before she went away, I don't know how I'm going to cope without you. And that was the first time I admitted I was going to be hurt by what was going on. And she too was hurt by that. Not because I was hurt, but because she was hurt, because she was going on and doing something new. But what was she leaving behind? And I guess in some ways she felt relieved, because I think I was a mess at that time. I'd been hiding my true feelings. So, today, when I ask how are we feeling, why and what can we do, again part of an assertiveness pro training program from the past, it opened up the floodgates for many people I encountered, and it was overwhelming and hurt for, for many. For some people it was their daily focus, unlike me back then. And what I mean by that, I'll go back to the first thing about assertiveness. How am I feeling? Why? What can I do? If I'm on my own, I can find out how I'm feeling, ask myself, why? What can I do? And work out what is the next best step. And this is also based on the 12-step program of AA. So. Assertiveness is all, all right to know uh, what we are and who we are and where we are. And when it said it opened up the door, for, when I say it opened up the door to exploring my true feelings and it hurt a great deal, it did hurt a great deal because my feelings that have been suppressed for so long. And even though alcohol was a good medicator way of feelings, eventually alcohol stopped working and breakdown after breakdown for me. I denied my feelings for a long time and it was overwhelming. So yes, we keep on drinking even when it's a horrible situation. And if we are addicted we cannot stop. And then for the empathy part, how are we feeling, why and what can we do? It's a daily thing. So if I'm with people, ask the question, how are they feeling? And how do we feel about the situation together? And what can we do? It's about empathy and understanding rather than asserting my, my position over your position. It's trying to get to a true common ground. It opened up the floodgates for many people I encountered who were like me, shut, shut down and suppressed. And it hurt them a great deal. But for some it was their daily focus, unlike me back then. 
there were many people I encountered who just dealt with their feelings as they were feeling feelings matched their situation real life as it was and is today so that's where I get to <clears throat> if I ask myself the questions and ask the questions of others we find common ground and understanding and we know a little bit more about what's going to work today and maybe tomorrow but we need to ask the question tomorrow how am I feeling and how are you feeling so we start again and that's like life is we start afresh each day one day at a time living in the moment of now and from previous years grief, loss and sobriety to love, be loved and useful is elemental so once we now know how to love people and I'm still learning because it, it, each and every person is different be loved and useful is elemental so I'm learning how to be loved back how to accept love how to accept being worthy of somebody else's endearments people, places and things change as we do it is inevitable and we will feel grief and loss and some grief and loss which has been suppressed for many years when we get a situation like a grief situation today all the old stuff can pile in with the new stuff and we get into a right old muddle so that's why in the fellowship we try and deal with our life story where the grief has been so we can deal with it so we don't add to the grief today being human we need not forget we need to cherish the good of life our history in the present day so we need to cherish people no matter what humans are human even if they can be quite inhuman towards us when they're enraged and we can love and cherish always we need to love and cherish always the best of people and that's how I dealt with losses in the past these days cherish the good memories that's the real grieving process to cherish what was but also when we get new encounters not to fall into the same old patterns which will cause the same situations to occur again so that means we can see what's coming a lot sooner if we have our eyes open to what is today and from the based on what is in the daily reflections for most normal folks drinking means conviviality companionship and colourful imagination I put a question mark there when we are sober a while we might wonder if this is true most normal folks in normal life do not drink as we did for us our sober life becomes extraordinary ordinary because ordinary life is extraordinary we don't need to make it bigger or smaller life is extraordinary even though it's ordinary that's just the way it is real feelings happy or sad today so if we know reality and as it is today and we can be happy or sad as life can be we stop worrying about how we ought or should be or could be we just live in the moment and we make good choices based on good information and our feelings being right sized for what is happening so it doesn't mean life is going to be all good in the sense of being happy and ecstatic what it means is we will feel life as it is so if there, if there is happiness we can experience happiness and if there is sadness we experience sadness anger, frustration, all the other things which are often said to be negative but they're not we are human and we have feelings for a reason to stop us or start us doing things which are good or less good and knowing and understanding what some of the consequences are as well so if we go on flights of fancy and build castles in the sky and there's no foundations we're probably heading for trouble as long as we have our feet on the ground to, a, to an extent we can still dream and build futures which don't exist yet but we live in the present moment and work out how we're going to get there and we value the journey towards what we might aspire to rather than feeling that we'll be okay when, when we get to the destination it's not the destination which counts that's absolutely certain it's the journey toward it and how we live in the moment enough of me for today as I say more follows but switch off when you're ready most important exercise choice always mm -hmm.